breathes all facets of top fuel drag racing. Between his experience here in Australia and in the USA, there's not much he doesn't know about these 11,000 horsepower beasts. We caught up with him and asked about some of the many elements he has to consider, from things like starting up the motor to tyres and everything in between. Well, generally we wait for the official to tell us when to fire. Then the two crew chiefs or the two guys that are starting the car, not necessarily the crew chiefs, will nod at each other. Once, once you go, then you turn on your ignition and squirt some fuel in the injector. Turn the motor on, the driver feels the car firing up and then he pulls the fuel pump on and then it changes to nitro. It's, it's idling, it's bypassing a lot, but it's consuming, it's chewing about 12 litres a, a minute while it's idling. And so then what we do is we set the idle by looking at the screen. You'll see most guys looking down and adjusting the, the air bleed on the injector, which then ups or downs the RPM. Warm the car up, trim the fuel back to a predetermined level. The uh, crew chief will set the idle by the air bleeds to, um, to get his RPM right. Then uh, Phil will check forward and reverse, make sure he's got a good feel on his clutch pedal. Then Daniel will check the timing on the, mat, on the timing lights so, uh, to second guess the computer. Then we'll cycle the system, which means Phil steps on the gas without opening the throttle. And what that does is it sets off the timers and sets off the clutch flows the, the uh, MSD uh, in ignition system and, and your fuel system, which then you can then check on your computer that, to make sure that everything's working. I've got some tyres that have got eight passes on them, but we just look at the condition of the tyre, the feathering, the rubber, any cuts, chunks. They normally get damaged before they get wore out. You normally run over something, or if the track prep is way, way beyond the way Justin's been <laughs> prepping the tracks, this season has been awesome, but in the old days where some of the tracks would use a lot of glue, it doesn't damage the tyre on the run, it damages the tyre when you get off the throttle if they've glued past the end of the thousand foot because it literally, the tyre goes from driving to being driven and it rips chunks out of the, out of the carcass of the tyre. Well, you try to do the same every time. In, up on the jack stands, the belly pan off, the containment device that goes around the bottom of the engine in case of a blow up, which contains the oil and parts and bits and pieces, it comes off, the oil's draining. While that's happening, the guys up on top have usually already got the fuel lines off, the blower's probably just about to come off, the blower belt's off, that's off. While that, once the oil's finished draining, Callum's normally got all of the bolts off the pan. The pan's normally coming down while the oil pump, pump is still going in. By that time, the clutch will be out already and Blake will be up there measuring all the plates and floaters to give us some thicknesses so we can work out our clutch wear. Callum will be then un undoing all the conrods. By then, uh, Dave and Daniel will have the uh, heads off and, and um, Daniel will be pushing pistons up against the cylinder heads if they're not fast enough. So then it gives us time to assess the main bearings and the condition of the sleeves, the rod bearings to see if the tune-up's right, uh, condition of the pistons, all of that takes place in about the first 15 to 18 minutes of getting back here. Um, people are grinding uh, floater plates and, or, or clutch hats. Uh, guys are packing parachutes. Jacinta's looking at the tyres to see if they're chunked or ripped. Um, Phil's packing chutes. Meanwhile, I'm sitting up there, you know, demanding cups of tea and looking at the computer and, and uh, checking my Facebook.